Hello, everybody. Welcome to our session from Union Public Library on LinkedIn. We are thrilled that you came and thank you all for coming. And I especially thrilled to invite Kenneth Lang to come. I don't know anyone who knows more about LinkedIn than he does. I let people introduce themselves because of course you'd rather hear from him than me. And so go for it, Kenneth, and thank you very much. And if you have questions during these sessions, just put it, um, them in chat and we'll get to them. Thanks, Kenneth. Well, thank you very much, Debbie, uh, for having me here tonight. And what I like to do with these presentations and when I talk about LinkedIn is go through you know, some background, but I like to go afterwards to LinkedIn itself because a lot of what um, I talk about is relevant, but it's a lot easier if we actually go to the to the platform itself. So I'm going to be going through some slides and I want, you know, if you have Q&A along the way, very happy to, to take it and very happy to work with, with everyone here. Um, what I'd be curious to know is if you just put in the chat, um, how you how much what you consider yourself in terms of LinkedIn beginner, advanced or um, or expert, because that would help help me in the future. Um, because most of what I do is, is geared towards someone who's probably just starting out. But again, this would be helpful for the future. So I'm just going to start the presentation now and um, get this here from beginning. OK, what I wanted to talk about tonight was some best practices. Um, LinkedIn, like everything else, has been evolving over time. It's been around 20 years now. Um, and throughout the years, not only has the platform changed, but the economy has changed, the job search has changed, the basic function of LinkedIn itself hasn't changed, but how you use the platform has. And along those lines, every profile, these are the basic needs. They haven't changed over time. They're very important to have for all different reasons. Having a picture is extremely important because that's the first impression you make with people. Um, people of my age, a lot of times don't want to put a picture up there because they're going to be perceived as being um, too old or unhireable, but you are who you are. Very important to take ownership of that. Um, the headline is something that goes underneath your name, and it is not just about the job that you have. It's an opportunity for you to put um, certain keywords or talk a little bit about yourself. And as we go through the presentation, I'll show you what some of these things refer to. Um, the about section is basically the area where you talk about yourself. Um, what is it about your experience that will lend itself to the next employer? And a lot of people make this mistake. They write the about section about how their resume is. It's more about taking your resume and turning it into, based on my experience, I can do A, B, and C, and D for you. Listing a job to, important, but you want to have some descriptions with it. Skills, you want to list those. And also, above all, is the need to engage. Waiting for people to reach out to you on LinkedIn is going to be um, really frustrating. You have to start the conversation, whether it's by connecting with people, whether it's by posting content, whether it's by engaging in other people's content. And then as an introvert, it's been extremely hard for me to do that over time. Uh, I'm so afraid of rejection. Um, imposter syndrome, but you can be your own worst enemy. And believe me when I say this, um, as someone who was, was in job transition many, many times, um, we're looking to do changes. The hardest thing to do is to get started. So this is what I mean by my headline. If you look at my name, you have underneath here, these are all different things that can be um, used to be searchable. I'm a job search a mentor, a job search expert, I'm a business analyst, product owner, and, and you break these up by either asterisks or something else, because anyone will do searching for anything. And what I put in here also is some little things about myself. I'm a New York Giants fan, very happy about that right now. Um, and I'm also always learning and always positive. Again, think about it from your perspective. You want it to be your first impression of what someone sees about you. And this background picture, which I'm gonna talk about next, very few people take advantage of this background. It's the old blue background. And I think one of the reasons most people don't do it is because they don't know how to do it. So what you would do is if you go to canva.com and just so you know, Debbie, I'll share this presentation with everyone um, with you and you can send it out to people afterwards. Canva.com is a place where you can get a free custom, customizable template. So if you go to this website and you select free, 
These are all different backgrounds that you can design. You can take them, you can do different colors, different fonts, and then you have a picture. It's very easy to do and very easy to use. And there's no reason not to. What, what most people do is they put, it's not searchable in the standpoint that if you put words on it, you can't search for them, but you can put your email address on there. You can put a picture on there. It's just another way to brand yourself. And job seekers, for the most part, don't do a great job of branding themselves because they don't think of them as having to sell themselves. As a job seeker, you definitely have to sell yourself in, in everything you do. And when I refer to the about section, the first few lines or so, I want someone, to, I want to get their attention. So I don't talk, I talk about a little bit about myself and it's, it's a way for me to get their attention. I also put my email address in right up here too, because if you don't put your email address in the about section, you're not, you, you can't, people, you don't assume people know how to get a hold of you. And so you can do any one, any number of things. Um, and underneath here with the experience, uh, I've listed some of my things there and the skills area here is something I'm gonna show you all how to do here. Cause I put skills in here cause they're all searchable words. Very important. Your profile is done two ways. One is to be searched by however you wanna be searched. And the other way is to make sure that you put all your information and everything about yourself there. So I'm go ahead, sorry. I'm sorry. Kenneth, can you just back up just a little bit and sure. just um, tell people exactly what LinkedIn is and what the purpose is? Okay, LinkedIn is basically, if you consider LinkedIn is pretty much a digital business directory, if you will, you can search for anyone and anybody there. You can search for jobs, you can search for people. You know, in the old days, we'd have all these business cards, we'd have be writing down notes. It's a way for you to find or be found in a very general way. Like everyone on this call, hopefully you're all on LinkedIn. And if you were to put your LinkedIn URLs in the chat, you'd all be able to connect with each other. Um, it's It takes a while to get to a certain place where you um, know how to do it kind of as the back of your hand, but if you do it little by little, and you do the first basics, like I'm suggesting here in about section, and experience section, it does get easier. The mistake a lot of people make is that they try to do too much at one time. Uh, and that's why even with this presentation, I wanna have time afterwards so people can ask me questions and I can walk through, because what I'm showing you here is some very general information. And it didn't, I didn't get to this um, the first day, but it did take some time. Skills, you wanna put skills on there. One thing which is a, a really cute thing is you can put any skills you want to, you can even make up skills. Um, but the reason you wanna put skills on there is that you can then be searched for them. So I get this question all the time. Do I do premium or do I ba do basic? I don't know how many people struggle with this question, but people wanna know if they should pay for it. And I'm gonna just show you some of the differences between the two. My gut is that you don't need to do premium for a long time. You can do it for 30 days for free, but I think it's important going in to use basic to as much as you can and premium later. But these are some general differences. And Deb, I have to ask you about the second one. You can do more in mails. Does, does the library and union have access to LinkedIn Learning by itself? Like can we, they can? We do not, but we okay. have, we don't. But we have um, taped recordings of how to how to create an account and what LinkedIn is. Okay, because some, some libraries actually have a, an account that they have access to LinkedIn Learning. But if not, you have access to learning a lot of different things there. There is additional search and browsing results and the ability of seeing who's viewed your profile, which I find very helpful because I like to know who's been looking at my profile. Um, it's not lurky if you do it the right way. What you also have with your premium is you can see who's viewed your profile over time. And this is really helpful too. It's just, a, it's, I'm a statistics geek as much as anything else. I'm, an, I'm a geek from many different things. So I, I read into this a lot. Um, it's information that unless you take advantage of it though, it's just um, window dressing. Um, most people are very okay with the basic to start. Um, this is one of the good things about LinkedIn Premium. You, based on your on your 
um, job on your profile, you can find out how many skills you have that are matched to the job. So let's say you're looking for a job and you see you're not matched to some of those jobs, to those uh, skills. You can add those skills to your, your profile. Again, it's, it's, it's helpful information. And everything that is on here that says premium means you only have access to it. You can get sample interview questions and answers that way. Um, sample answers to questions. This part here about where it says, tell me about yourself, why should we hire you? You can get information there, but you're not gonna actually be able to get the videos. I mean, you will get some of this information here. And, and Deb, this is an area I would absolutely recommend that people talk about here. It's just go under the, uh, the ability to search for interview questions. Because a lot of times you'll get the answer to questions here without going much further. You can get data on a company staff. Again, this is me being the nerd here. You can see the hiring team at a company. So if you're applying for a job, you know actually who the person is that's hiring. And the thing that I've liked the most more recently is I can create an out of the office message on LinkedIn if I'm not on the platform. Um, you can actually, by doing that, you can create text, I'm away, people respond to you. And it's like being an out of the office, um, whether you're on Outlook or something else. I don't know how many times you know you do that in general, but Again, it's, it's a business platform, so you're, you're treating it that way. But everything from this point on now is going to be for anyone who has basic. But I just want to pull out some of the premium things. Uh, it's about, I believe the latest is it's $29.99 a month. I don't know um, if it's changed a lot since then. I use premium for two reasons. First of all, I take full advantage of it and also because um, I was grandfathered in when I wasn't paying $30. So um, what I alluded to before, you wanna assign skills, and I showed you that in the other slide, within each job, you wanna assign skills to your work experience. And the way you do that, and this is why I wanna go later on to uh, LinkedIn itself is to walk through this, you would go to the profile section where you have this um, skills, you would then select um, a pencil by your job, and then you can determine the skill that you want and you can include it on your profile. And I went through that a little bit quickly um, because what I really wanna do is I wanna test this with someone here and actually show them how to do it um, in real time. And this is how it would look though. So every time you put a skill, it would show up within a specific job and each of these are searchable. You're able to now pin comments and the way it is, and again, for someone like myself who does posting and things, I like to pin a comment to the top, get noticed. Um, as of three weeks ago though, this was removed. So I had to update this presentation and it's gonna return soon, which brings me to one point about LinkedIn. Everything I'm telling you about LinkedIn is pretty much valid for today. Things can change tomorrow. And one of the things that keeps keeps me um, on my toes is keeping track of changes so that if someone has a question, I can respond to them. Another thing LinkedIn has rolled out that's been very good is you, you can separate out messages by focused and other, which is a nice way of saying spam. Um, it automatically is determined, so I won't see certain messages and others I will. I love this as a new thing that just came out. When people, creating a post is when you have, when you create a post, it's like putting an update sharing some information. Um, I don't know how many of you have done that or not, but when you actually go on LinkedIn and engage, it used to be that you would create a post, you'd either share a link, you'd write an article, and you would post it, and it would go live right away. Now you have the ability to schedule it. So let's say it's nine o'clock at night. I want to write a post, but I don't want it to go till tomorrow morning. I can write the post, and then with this uh, clock there, which is over here, I can select that icon and then it's going to say, when do you want to run it? So I can schedule this in the future. I can schedule multiple things in the future. What I do a lot of times because I um, want something to go out first thing in the morning, but I don't want to get up at seven or eight in the morning to write it is I'll schedule it for the next day. So I'll schedule the post and then the way it works later on is you will get, I actually did this as a post. I said, you can now schedule your post in advance. I wrote this to run at eight o'clock. And a lot of what I do on LinkedIn is educational um, and it's testing things that I want people to understand. And the best way to do it is to actually show them the steps. 
you can look at your past posts as well. Again, this is when you get started in the beginning, if you go back and look at your posts and engagements, the numbers may be very, very small, but you're looking more to see how things improve over time. I think most people don't take advantage of this in the beginning because they don't know that's there, but you would be surprised over time, the more you engage on the platform, the more content you put, the better it's going to be. And you can also do this a sort by the types of posts that you have. This is helpful to me. What I'm going to say right off the bat is numbers are not everything. It's not how many impressions you get or even how many comments. It's how many people are actually looking at your content. There are people, some of my best posts have gotten only a few hundred impressions, but people have engaged on or people just know about them. So do not get caught up on the numbers. This is what I was alluding to before, Deb, this thing called um, verification. If you go to someone's profile, whether you're connected or not, and you select more, there's a thing which says about, the pro about this profile. And this is LinkedIn that has already confirmed that this person exists. And you'll find out this person existed when they did, when they last updated their information. And if they have a phone number, it's verified. LinkedIn has been doing this behind the scenes for the last few months or so. Um, you don't get any say in this, but if you're not a real person, you won't be noticed and you will not, if someone doesn't about this profile, that information will not come up. So it's, it's another thing that's helpful. It's, I do this from time to time when people want to connect with me. I just want to look at them and just get a sense of them. It's a start. It's not all that LinkedIn can do to combat spam and automation, but again, it's, it's a start. So what I always like to do is talk about the past year. And I did a post a long time ago. I don't know how many of you remember the, the Western, the good, the bad, and the ugly of Link um, with Clint Eastwood, but I kind of make that as a catchy thing because again, it's easy to understand. And when I say the good, I mean that the good things that LinkedIn put out, the bad things and the things I wish they wouldn't. So as a bit of review, People that have creator mode, which are people like myself, um, we can add a clickable link in our profile. Um, again, creator mode is another aspect of LinkedIn, which basically is a different way of engaging. I put that out there in case some of you are on creator mode. If you're not, happy to show you how that works. The analytics, which I find very helpful, and employee verification, which I think is really great. And now LinkedIn is also rolling out audio events. It, you know, instead of just um, attending an event like by a, a Zoom or, or on LinkedIn, you can actually attend a LinkedIn event by audio, kind of like a podcast. And what's even better about that on top of everything else is this closed captioning. So um, you're on the event. It's like you and I, we'd all be chatting, but we wouldn't see each other. And for those of us who aren't always looking the best and don't look um, like we're ready for business, it's great to be able to hang out that way. Also meeting the hiring team for premium users. I love also this, you can save any post you do now as a draft. You wanna come back to it later on. LinkedIn never used to give you that ability to. And that's a compromise between doing something in the future. Um, maybe you just have to get away for a little while, but you don't wanna lose your train of thought. And again, the scheduling of posts and then assigning skills with an experience. For those that are looking for a job, the most important thing to do is to have a very, complete profile. It doesn't have to be hundreds of lines, but it has to have all the different components and you have to be searchable. Now for the bad, which is really bad, LinkedIn will give you something called, they will give you a career break as an option, but don't use it. Because when you put a career break and LinkedIn will ask you about adding a career break, it's not a searchable thing. And you're better off creating the career break with something is more meaningful. You can call yourself a volunteer. You can say something else, but if you come up with a title or something, or you can say you're volunteering or you're, um, you're um, doing part-time work, it's much better than letting LinkedIn do it for you. You're actually gonna be creating a, create the job. I wish LinkedIn help had a place where I could find everything. There's so many questions they're asked again and again and again. Um, I also wish the folders were better set up. I wish there was a way, kind of like with Outlook or any other um, email platform, you can move things to different folders. 
and the idea of capture technology. You know, when you go to a site sometimes and it asks, you know, select the ones that are railroad tracks, select the one pictures that have dogs, select the pictures um, that the beach, that's what you want to have here because the LinkedIn had that capability. Anything automated would not be able to pick it up. And that's a piece that want to see, I don't know how easy it is to accomplish, but I think it would really go a lot further than LinkedIn goes now. And, and one caveat, and I always say this too, you've probably heard LinkedIn has 850 million, 900 users. That's not really true. They have 850 million accounts as an email addresses. Many of those accounts are fake. Some of those accounts are duplicates of one person. And sadly, some of those people don't aren't around anymore. So you really have to look at the numbers with a grain of salt. Uh, on, on, in general, probably less than 1% of the people on this platform actually do any engaging. But don't be caught up in the numbers. I mean, we will all throw numbers out. It's more about taking advantage of how you can make this platform work well to you. So again, spam, spam, spam. There's a thing called templates for mobile posts. Um, Basically, the mobile LinkedIn, unless you're using it for um, job search, when you go to in-person events, probably not as relevant. I'm going to show you one thing on a mobile post that you definitely, a mobile platform that you definitely want to do. There's a thing called Ring My Bell. You can ring someone's bell, theoretically, and you're going to get notified when they post something. It doesn't really work. They say it's going to work. Um, the old roll out, LinkedIn giveth and taketh away. Why roll out something? You know, they had pin posts, they took them away. They do that a lot of times and some people get it and some people don't, um, don't get it and they never do. And then there's something that just came out. You can create posts and connection requests through um, artificial intelligence. In other words, you can type in words on different websites and say, how do I create a connection request? And it will come back to you with an automated connection request that you can use. You want things to be coming from you, not from a machine. And I can ask you a question going back one. Um, sure. can you, and then we have also, if you look in the chat box, we have a question about um, the, the premiere. Sure. Um, sure. But the question I want, um, can you explain in generic terms or what a career break is and, and what it means? Sure. So, so let's say you've been out for two, two years, you had to take care of someone at home for the pandemic, you're coming back to the workplace after 10 years, you haven't had a job for two or three years, but you had a job before. So you wanna fill that gap in with something, but you don't want LinkedIn to be the something to fill it in with. So let's say you were out for a year or two years, you can still create a job and that job can be, um, that you were a volunteer that job can be that a job can actually be what you want to do and you can put it within the description i was out of work for a couple of years you know it's it's not as looked down upon now for, for people to have career gaps uh it's expected to some extent that you're going to have breaks because that's just the way the economy is now a, a lot of positions come and go and you know you read every day about more people being laid off I think it's about a strategy. Um, I don't want LinkedIn to do anything for me um, because I don't know, I have no control over how they're gonna use the data. I would rather create something myself. Um, and it's really just so that you come out a certain way. You know, again, you, it's not, if you don't have a current job, if your last job that's on there has an end date, it, it affects your being searched. So let's say you've been out, out for a year. You have to create a current job. That current job can be, any number of things. And you would mention within the description that you're looking for a job. It, it seems a little bit counterintuitive, um, but you, you don't want to lie or mislead people. But at the same time, you want people to know you haven't just been sitting on your hands and just uh, eating food all day and watching TV and just streaming. You know, you, maybe you've been taking training. Maybe you've been uh, learning. So I hope that answers the question. So what was what was the other question about? Um, Sean, I think it's Sean. Sean, do you want to ask your question? Hold on. Let's see, chat. Sean asks, um, does premium give you skill hierarchy within searches? So you can delete some no. skills. No, Scott, no. What the searching 
within premium versus basic is not affected by how you put the skills out. There's, there's no change to that. Um, but if you don't list certain skills on your plat on your profile, no one's going to know. And you would be surprised. You know, one of my recruiter friends gives me a great example. You may be very familiar with Microsoft Office, but that means PowerPoint, that means Word, that means Excel, that means Access. So you want to list each of those separately if need be, because recruiters are not necessarily doing a search for a generic thing like that. Sometimes you want to go to a job and see what the job requirements are and add those skills to your job. Um, it's, it's about marketing yourself. Great. Sorry. What, any other questions? Okay. I think, I hope that answered your question. Well, but, if not, but, if, if not, when we go to LinkedIn itself, I'll definitely open it up. I mean, I, I don't, um, I think a lot of these questions are easier to, to sh explain when I go through them and um, going through the steps. So one thing that's changed is when you get an accepted connection request, don't follow up the next right away. There's just that, take a day or two, think about it. Like if you connect with me and I accept, um, I may follow up with you in a day or so only because there's so many people that send spam and try to sell you stuff right away that it's just, it, it just becomes a bit much. And then having a very specific call to action. What do you want? Why do you want to connect with me? Or why do you want to connect with someone else? What can I specifically do to help you? If you want to learn about a company, do you want, do you want five to 10 minutes of my time? Um, the more I know, the better. And same with the about section. If you're available for a remote opportunity or a part-time opportunity, or you're willing to travel, let people know that. You know, don't assume that people understand everything. You want to put everything out there. And when I talk about posting, it's much more important than instead of posting is engage with people. Go and I'll show you later on things I'm referring to. Um, go to, a, go to a, a question that's been put out and add comments to it. If you're going to post, there are good and bad times to post. And I say that only because of when people are on the platform. If you think about people that are working, they're not thinking about LinkedIn and checking it out during the week. They may be checking it out on a Monday morning or Friday afternoon, definitely on the weekends. I'm not saying not to post at those other times, but if you want the best, best opportunities, I always say on a Sunday evening, send out your connection request to people, then it'll be the first thing in their mailbox, reach out to them maybe on a Friday. And it's a trial and error thing, because if I'm trying to reach out to people in one part of the country, or if I'm trying to reach out to someone in Europe or Australia, my posting at one time is not going to work for someone else. And that's what those are all things to consider. And can you just explain to people what it is, what a post is exactly? Yeah, I will. What I will do is when this is over, I mean, I'll actually create a post with everyone here and I'll show people what it is. It's actually creating, in addition to your profile, it's, it's putting information out there. And I think when we get to the end of the presentation, I usually allow about, it's about half an hour or so to actually go through some of these things too, um, which I think is very helpful. The other things, again, I'm, I'm gonna pass through these now because I wanna spend more time on LinkedIn. One thing I do wanna mention is, does everyone know what, a, if everyone knows what a QR code is, you have it on your phone and it's a great way to connect with people. So if you go to your phone and you go to your phone and you select my network, you'll see a blue circle. And then on the blue circle, you can select scan your code and then your code is there. And all you have to do is, is, is take picture of, if someone let, let someone else's camera take a picture of your QR code and vice versa, and you get a connection request right away. So hypothetically, if you took a picture of that right now, we'd be connected. And I always think if you're gonna have a business card or something like that, not a bad thing to do, but if everyone has that code and it doesn't change um, if you change the content on your, uh, on your profile. So just as some reminders, you wanna have a picture, you wanna add a background picture and LinkedIn is keyword driven. Now we're gonna go to LinkedIn. And I wanna go to LinkedIn now for the rest of this, if that's okay and actually go through some of what I've talked about. So I think that would be helpful. And I, I wanna open it up to questions that you, you all may have. Um, so I'm here right now. 
like this is my profile now. So I am an open book. I will walk through stuff. I will show you guys how to do stuff. If I don't get any questions, I'll just go through this with you um, in real time. But that's what I wanted to do first, Deb, is just kind of go to here. So I'll take questions first, and then I'll go through some of what I'm talking about later. And I just want to, um, and Let Letitia, you can ask your question in a minute, but I just want to tell people it's so much easier to understand LinkedIn when you actually go through it. So um, this will be really helpful. If you've been feeling a little lost, this will help you. Letitia has a question. Letitia, do you want to ask? Sure. sure, sure. Should you only have one profile or should you? Yeah, you only have one profile. It's only, if you have a business, you can create a profile for your business, um, but there's only one you. Now, how you post as yourself may be different than your company. But what I said before, when I said before, like what is a post? If you go to your home feed, these are a bunch of articles here right off the bat, everyone has articles. So let's say, um, here's an article, Southwest offers rewards after chaos. Everyone knows what's going on with Southwest and, and what they did there. So you can go to something like this and you can say, you know what? I wanna add a comment to this. I wanna add a comment to what they're saying here. Same way in general. I mean, you can turn around and you can say, here's something I want to add. Um, instead of trying to write a post yourself, or you can go, again, it says um, latest layoffs. What a lot of people do here is, is they go over here and they may actually put down, you know, again, this is Vinimo, Vinmio had a big layoff today. So this person announced on here that they were reducing the, the task, the amount of people. And then a lot of people, and then one person put underneath there, they were part of the layoffs. So, so they talk about themselves, but share, tag, and comment. So if you join a post like that, you're part of the conversation. Um, if you want to create your own post, because I think what everyone was alluding to, this is your home, this is your home page here. The difference is it'll be your picture instead of mine. I select start a post. Create a post. What do you want to talk about? Okay, and let's we can do this in real time. So I can say, um, I can what I can do is one of two things. I can actually take a URL from some article or something. So let's say, um, let's just go here. Let's do a job search. So let's say, for example, I find here. I could take this here, I could, I could click this, I could select this, and I could do a cut and paste, and that could become my post. Not the best thing to do, but it's something. What I could do instead, and what I would recommend doing is, let's, let's do a post together. So what do, I, what do I feel like talking about now? So I can say, or each of you can say, I'm, Currently in transition, looking for a job in blank. I'd be happy to connect with anyone here. So if I were to type this, that would be a post. The whole world would see that. Now that may not be the thing you want to show, but it's an example. So does anyone have any suggestions? Like if, if, if you were gonna write something now, what would you write about? What do you feel like talking about? And, and the whole reason to post is to be noticed by other people who see your talent, right? Right, or the other thing is this, if you go into the three dots, which, which is something which I always suggest is the first step, you have a thing called create a poll. It's asking the LinkedIn community. So I'm gonna actually do that right now. So let's, ha let's have a question of the group. What's a question you want to ask the LinkedIn community, everyone? Whatever it is, I'm, I'm game. You guys must have a question. Ed, what, what, what's... Um, uh, what can I expect to make as, as a bookkeeper? 
Um, it's a lousy post, right? <laughs> well, no, I mean, um, all right, how, what is your main New Year's goal, let's say? That's something like that, okay? Or, again, and I'd love a question from the group. Um, you can ask a job search question. It's, you're asking anything and everything. I mean, you can ask what's the best way to job search. I'd love to get someone. The reason I'm saying is because this the poll will start to be voted on once we're on, even when we're on the call. And I'd love to see um, see a question that you actually want to have answered. So is there any specific question? So we do have a question, but I think um, it's how do I find a job on LinkedIn? But I think- All right, so, so, so here, what is, so I'll rephrase it. What is the best way to find a job on LinkedIn? Okay, so I'm gonna come some options. One, apply for a job I see here. Connect with someone, connect with others. Um, add option. Well, um, connect with others. Um, I've, I don't use LinkedIn. And then other. So again, I'm, so here. What is the best way to find a job and apply for a job I see here? Connect with others. I'm gonna change this to primary. What is the, the best way? What is the best way to find a job on LinkedIn? Apply for a job I see here. Connect with others. I don't use LinkedIn. Other, or I'm gonna say combination. Combination of these and list and add, add your comments. So, too many lines, combination of these. Add your comments as well. So I'm gonna do that now and I'm gonna set this as, you, I'm gonna set this as like a three day poll. So is everyone kind of okay with these uh, options here? I think so. What I'm going to do next I'm going to do done. What do you want to talk about? So I'm going to say I created this poll as part of the presentation I'm currently doing or and I don't know if you got as are you on LinkedIn as a page here? In your county public library? Yeah. Please would love feedback. So I'm gonna put this out. And then when I do that, I'm gonna select post. And now it's here for the whole world to see. And hopefully during this call, we're gonna get some results. But it's very easy to create a poll about anything and everything. So that's, and that's a post. That's actually a post that you can do. So, um, and, and, how does, and how does that help you in your job hunt? Because when you get results back, you want to, you can respond to people that are on the poll. You know, you can, you can say, thank you. Know, I noticed you took my poll and you can have a follow-up conversation. It's a way to engage without actually having to call someone up or email someone, it's a good first step. Um, and I'm gonna just check every once in a while to see what's going on here. Um, so, see if anyone's voted yet or not. I created this poll, there we go. I have got one vote, connect with others. And because I'm the person that created the poll, I can find out who actually voted on it. So the first person that vo voted on it was, let's see. 
Okay. Um, one vote. Connect with others. David Lidauer connected. So I will see that and I can reply to David. Thank you very much for answering my final question. It's just an example of engaging. You don't have to do a lot of different things. Um, if you go to your feed here, you'll see there's one of the questions that we have a lot is what is appropriate to put on LinkedIn? Some people look at LinkedIn as a bit Facebooky and they'll put videos and things. LinkedIn is whatever you want it to be. There are certain things we do and don't discuss, but don't be afraid to post. Don't be afraid to comment. Now, I'd be happy to look at someone's profile if they want, if they're comfortable, and we can walk through it together, or I can leave this open as a QA. and I mean, I, I want presentations like th this to have meaning to the people that I'm doing them for. So it, it's not that I've run out of content or anything. I really want people to actually ask me questions that are relevant to them. So does anyone want to, willing to be a guinea pig or anyone want me to look at a profile or a profile or anything or want me to go through what I have? Because it's really up to you guys. So maybe, Kenneth, now would be a good time for people to have the opportunity to introduce themselves. Absolutely. And, and say what kind of work they're looking for. And then we can all um, connect to each other on LinkedIn. Oh, one thing I want to suggest, if you go to something like on search and you type I'm hiring, like here, and then you come back and you want to select people, and let's say locations, this area, you're going to find anyone who has I'm hiring in the name. These are all people that are hiring and you can break it down even further. Like if I do all filters and let's say that I want to go with a specific industry or something, um, I can do that. So let's say down here, I go to let's say here I care about tech, technology and that. So if I do that now, I now have 328 people in my industry that are hiring. They're saying that they're hiring. You don't know what they're hiring for exactly, but it's it's an example of how you use LinkedIn as a search engine. It's like a it's like a business Google, if you will. So um, we, we, we have two people who volunteered um, to have okay. you look at their LinkedIn. All right. And, and maybe three. One okay. is Idel Boy, Boykin, B-O-Y-K-I-N. What's the first name? Idel, I-D-E-L-L. -L. Okay. All right. Idel, is that you? Yes, it is. Okay. Um, we are not connected about. Okay. Um, I would include your email address in here for sure. Um, okay. I like the about section start because it talks about your passion and talks about what you want to do and you have additional skills. I would definitely mention, um, are you looking for a job? I am kind of. I just found work, to be honest with you. Okay, I'm in, no, I'm, I'm, I'm in the training stages right now. Okay, so, so um, congratulations. Congratulations. It's remote, so yeah, thank you. It was one of those remote opportunities I've been wanting okay. anyway. So, it was so what, very what you have good. here is this is good. You added skills underneath each of your jobs. So, for example, you have these skills here. That's all great and that's searchable. Um, <laughs> job. Um, you said about, right? When, where's, um, this is the I'm about now, section here. So okay. you, you have the about section here. You have additional skills. Um, it's a career that- oh, I see what you mean, I see it. Thank you, I see it. Um, I mean, the things that, you know, one of the things that's here is a lot of these companies here don't have actual company pages. That's not your fault. Mm. But I wonder if Century Event Services goes by a different name. Or not, I don't know. Um, but that's that's not on you. Um, you say you've been doing training now. What type of training? Is remote? Is like online? I got a meeting tonight at eight p.m. So it's it's online. But you might want to mention that somewhere too. The okay. other thing, again, again, this is a little thing here. When I look over here, 
it says people also viewed over here. Mm. You want to think about hiding that because you don't want people to leave your profile once they're here. And there's a way that you can hide that. Okay. Thank you for the sure. suggestion. Um, but in general, like, you know, I'm looking at what's here. Um, you can add more keywords here, like connect with me. Because like if I select contact info now, I don't have your email address because we're not first connections. So I need to include it in the about section. About section, section right? absolutely. About, absolutely. Like so say, right you know, here. Because if I want to get a hold of you, yeah, I can I can link with you on LinkedIn. I could ask Deb, but I have no email address or anything. And maybe I want to. And then the more about this profile. So this tells me about you. You joined in 2014. And this, this is information. So I can say, well, you've been on this platform for eight, nine years. It's, it's helpful to know that. Now, with the um, email, do I put it in the beginning or after the additional skills include? Where would I put it? it does, I would put it probably, you know, put it like at the end of it. Like, like, I'd love to have a conversation with you or let's connect. My email address is. It doesn't have to be a... Because it's not so much the searchable, but if I call this up like I am now, let's say I don't want to connect with you, or if I, or maybe I know someone who wants to reach out to you, I have an email address. Okay. And it's however you set it up. Now, again, under more um, about this profile, you can look at other people the same way I'm looking at you. Same thing. If I was going to connect with you, and I, we will do this, I'll do connect. And it says you can add a note to personalize. I'll add a note and I'll say, it was great meeting you at. Let's connect. Like that. So I'll do that. And you'll get that. Um, and, and that's kind of a good protocol. Anytime you connect with someone, just add a note as a reminder. Because I, okay. I sometimes need that reminder too. So mm -hmm. um, what other questions or what other things can I? Um, Emmeline is also interested in having you look at her LinkedIn. How, how do you spell it? L her E-M-E-L-Y-N. E, e what? E-M-E? E-M-E-L-Y-N. Uh-huh. L-A-M-A-S. And then Trudy has a question after that. So is that it? Is that spelled right? Emmeline, do you want to come on and talk? Well, so here's the thing. No picture right off the bat, um, what you want to do. There is no about section. So <laughs> I, again, it, it, it's not, you want to have an about section for sure. Um, are you looking for a job now? I don't know. I mean, I, I would look at a profile like this and not know what to make of it, honestly. Um, and you would add skills, but at the very least, you want to have a picture. Now, is and dental assistant, is that what you want to do? Because what's happening now is it's taken the default from experience. It looks Change. different from the app on my phone because I actually have a, um, like a bio, like a description, something like that. You have two profiles, you're saying, or? No, I only have one, and right. it looks different from the app on my phone. I, I know my um uh, profile on linkedin it has a lot of work okay to do because i just created a couple years ago when i start working and i don't have a lot of experience either because i'm in school right now okay but the tips that you gave us about um not letting linkedin fill out the gaps between jobs because i was not working for like a long time uh, it's really good, like you said, do something about volunteering or creating a well, job. Your, your experience could be as a student now. That's experience. Mm -hmm. If you're currently a student, then that can be experience. Yeah. Because I'm not currently in college right now. So okay. I feel like me taking the, um, putting the date where my last semester was is going to show that i'm well, what not you, what, you, what have you been doing for the last year because it ends in december 2021 so for the last year um no so i did went to college for this spring semester 
Uh -huh. I took a break. I did a volunteering. Okay. And me... So your experience could be, let, let me show you how it works with, with, with if it's okay to, when you're going to create a position, okay? Yes. All right, so I can't do it on yours, but I can do it on mine, obviously. So I'm going to go to my profile here. And let's say, for argument's sake, that I, how was, I've been out for a while. So here's my experience. I'm going to create a, this here. I'm going to add a position, which is what you're going to do now. You don't want to add a career break. You can add a position. Okay, what's the title going to be? So let's go through this together. Volunteer, is that fair? Yes. So my experience is volunteer. Um, community, whatever. Employment type. Don't have to put that in there. Company name. So did you volunteer for a specific company? If you didn't, then we, we, we'll, we'll do something else. Just use the word. <laughs> but um, so if not, we'll go, in a different, we'll go in a different direction. I mean, we can put, what do you want to do? So this past months, I've been dedicating fully to study for this volunteering that I did for only a month. Uh, but that was basically what I was doing. All like, right. So here, so freelance, yeah. we're going to say freelance, because that basically is, is, a, is a cover. Um, your experience is freelance. Again, it's not important. Your location is going to be let's say New York City area. Start date. And again, let's say this is January, 2022. So we're gonna go to here. No end date. So again, this is gonna be your profile. It's gonna be your freelance, your freelance location. You're currently working there, which you will be, and your end date. If not, so industry is what industry do you want? What industry would you like to be in? Uh, in the dental industry. So dental industry dentist. Let's say. Description: I'm currently volunteering at, and um, also. And what so, so assistant looking for my next stop? And I'm just kind of throwing something like this together. So, so you would have some description in here, okay? Whatever it is, and then you would select save, and you would add it to your profile. Okay. And that's just the way to get around the system because right now what LinkedIn is is um, is telling me about you is that you if I'm calling you up on here, it is what have you been doing for the last year? <laughs> no, and I'm not trying to, I'm not saying that to be facetious. I'm saying I understand, I understand. I'm taking feedback. Um so you have done stuff, whether it's been training, whether it's been mm -hmm. whatever. You want to you want to account for that time, yes. because if I'm on LinkedIn, I wouldn't know the first thing about what you want to do with your about section, and it's a process. All of this is a process, and it's it's meant with best intentions. Believe me. Thank you. Sure. Anyone else? Um, we do have a question from sure. Tru Trace Trudy. Trudy, can you come on and ask your question? Sure. I was just wondering, um, you know, I get invitations all the time from people that I don't know, and I um, tend to be a little, you know, yeah, me, about accepting invitations. And I was just, and, and you put your email right in your about section. So I was just wondering, people must reach out a lot. And how do you kind of filter through well, all I'm of that? Showing, I'm showing you right now, as we speak right now, I got 66 people waiting to connect with me. Uh -huh. <laughs> And most of them, I don't know who they are from a hole in the wall. Okay. 
or I'll get this LinkedIn recommend that we connect. Let's connect. Okay, sure. I mean, so I don't know who most of these people are. So what I will do in more cases than not is I will go to someone's profile like this, you know, where it says message or here, I'll just reply back and I'll say, Miguel, got your connection request. And again, why do you specifically? And, and I'm not gonna just send this right now, but, but I'm gonna come up with something, like I'm gonna follow up. And 99% of the time after that, I never hear back from the person. Because they don't know what they want. <laughs> well, no, or, or what they're doing in many cases is they're sending the same thing out through automation to hundreds of other people. Because if you notice over here, it says LinkedIn recommended we connect. Let's connect if you're open to it. The high mm -hmm. Kenneth, that's put in by, a, by, a, by, auto, by intelligence. It'll be a different different name for everyone else. This is not, and we all kind of can tell these from a mile away. Mm. Same with this. I see we have some ver some common goals and mutual connections. Um, it, it's it, it's hard to know. I think for the most part, um, here I'm a mobile developer and UI designer. Would appreciate if you accepted my invitation. I don't know how to answer that to be honest mm -hmm. um but but more times than not what i'll do is i'll just let things go if people want to connect with me they'll feel, they'll connect and that's why the email address is there i'm not afraid of people reaching out to me but mm -hmm. i want people like everyone in the school you're all welcome to connect with me believe me and i'll know who you are from the call but but when you're getting connection requests from everywhere all you want is some idea I don't want to be a number to someone. I mean, there are people that have thousands upon thousands of followers, and that's not my thing. I'd rather have people in a network that I've kind of met. Okay. And do you do one-on-one? -on -one I do one-on-one. -on -one. Basically, you know, it's like we would sit down, we would talk about what do you want to do? Like we go through it because I can look at a profile and get a sense in five, 10, 15 seconds, but it's not the same thing as having a conversation because there's things you can't go through in about an hour or so. And I don't, you know, I, what I want to do with a presentation like this is not just go through the slides, but show you and to some extent what's going on. And before we leave, I'm curious to see how many people that actually answered the poll question. So let's see. Uh, I have now gotten eight votes on the poll. Eight votes in the time we've been here. Apply for a job, connect with others, combination. No one's added a comment, but by doing a poll like that, you get engagement. And I may reach out to the people on the poll and ask about why they connected. And that may become something I post later on. You know, you have a, so many people you can reach out to. You can ask a question about, I'm frustrated with my job search. What do you suggest I do? And have three or four things. Or why do you think this isn't working? You have millions of people that are willing to help you. Don't be afraid to take advantage of them. So um, I just want to say, um, I don't want to keep you too long. Chastity would like you to look at her LinkedIn. Oh, sure. Um, I want to give everybody, I really do want to give everybody, if you want to go around and say what you're looking for, someone in this group might even know. So um, how do you somebody. spell Ch Chastity? Santana. The other question I want to ask you, Kenneth, is, um, so I've been on LinkedIn probably since the beginning, and the deal was you always wanted to get as many people connections as you possibly could so that you could access groups and, you know, a variety no. of things. Is that is that still a thing? Or? No, it's about quality versus quantity. Um, because of all the connections I have, I probably only stay in touch with a few hundred, and some of the people I connected with, I'm not sure why anymore. Um, yeah, well, a few hundred is, I would say, is quite impressive. Okay, well, here, I'm looking at yours. Um, okay, this is a resume discussion, experience consultant. So I'm going to say to you, why are you different than everyone else? Or what is it about your background that would lend itself? Because on top of this, you don't have anything showing from February of 2016 to now. So what have you been doing the last seven years? Got to be doing something. 
I mean, all this volunteering, there's a lot of time, even if you've just been doing volunteering the last six, seven years, that counts as experience. And you wanna mention that in the about section, because if I'm looking at, at this profile and you're looking for a job, I wanna have a little more meat to the profile. And I don't know what skills you have specifically, um, but you just want to, you want to, you want to, especially in your case, maybe start by posting some content or just letting people know that you're out there. I mean, I love the background picture for sure. It definitely speaks to who you are and what you're looking to do. You have special advocate, if that's what you still want to do. Um, if you don't want to be a special education advocate and you want to do other things, that's where you have the opportunity to. Can I ask a small question? I can't get it to say Union, New Jersey. Every time I put Union, New Jersey, it defaults to Union City. That could be. I don't know if it's because I have a Spanish surname. No, I, I think if you go to the locations, if Union, New Jersey isn't an option because there's Union County and there's Union. I've, I put in my zip code, like I've tried and it will always default to Union City. So do me a favor, because that's going to be a question I would ask LinkedIn. That's nothing you have any control over. What mm -hmm. you can do is you can, if you put the zip code in, mm -hmm. you put in and you make a greater New York City metropolitan area, by its nature, LinkedIn will look for 50 miles within the zip code. Mm -hmm. So if you change New Union City to greater New York City area and you have the zip code, it'll serve the same purpose. It's just that okay. that's a workaround, because I don't know what... I'm doing it now as we speak. Okay. Yeah. Kenneth, can I share your email with everybody in case Ab there's- Absolutely, absolutely. And it's, in the, and it's in the presentation and I'm happy to have follow-ups. Like, like I said, I really wanted to make this somewhat engaging as well, um, instead of just me kind of going through a bunch of slides. And, and I think you um, sort of did the iceberg, the top of the iceberg, because we didn't talk about groups and there's so many other things on LinkedIn that we could have a different session every night on LinkedIn. Oh, absolutely. I mean, LinkedIn, there are, we're all still learning about this. And um, what I would say is a little bit of a, uh, a thing for one of my friends. Um, Brenda Miller has a group called VIP Job Seeker Resources. It's a great group to join. Um, it's free and she does calls as well. And we post a lot of jobs there and I'll send, share this with you as well. Um, Okay, I'll this, share it with this, everybody. Yeah, because this is a group where we all post, um, we share content and things and best best practices because you don't want to go through any of this alone. And that's kind of the hardest part of this is we'll have this conversation now, now and then you'll go off and everyone will be like, what do I do next? Is premium worth it? Um, it's probably worth it to try once you have everything down with basic. I mean, if, if you, there's so much with basic you can do that you don't want to go right into it. Um, my gut feeling is at least make sure your entire profile has all the different components. Then maybe try premium, but ask yourself, what do you want? What are you looking for? And maybe you're, you're going to get it with basic on itself. You may not need premium. You know, Some of the things I showed you about premium are very, very specific and helpful, but there's so much you can do with basic. It's just that people can ask me that question. It's kind of like an it depends question basically, because Everyone's different. Great. So um, no one came forth and said what they're looking for, which is fine. I hope you all got something out of this session. I will send you a copy of the recording. In fact, I'm going to stop the recording as soon as I can figure that out. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll send you, I'll send you where the presentation is. I don't know if you want to post it on your